Hello, in this video we will discuss about dynamics and kinematics, electrical engineering, uh, mechanics, module 4. So, uh, let's get started. So, first we are going to understand uh, the basis of dynamics. So, what is dynamics? Dynamics is the study of forces and the effects on motion. So we already know what source so force is uh, nothing but uh, uh, that we need uh, to move an object. So what are its effects? So the effects like acceleration, velocity, displacement. In these quantities, we are interested in dynamics these effects so for example a surface a say a block it is moving with some velocity so we, we are interested in uh, what's its acceleration what's its velocity what's its speed in displacement so what force is necessary to stop it similarly Similar things can happen on the case of a body rotating. Imagine a disc rotating about this axis at an angular velocity omega. So we have the rotational equivalent, like uh, for acceleration, we have uh, angular acceleration alpha. For velocity, we have angular velocity v. To displacement, we have angular displacement theta. So everything has its equivalence. It's uh, analog or equal or an analog. So this is the linear case, and this is the rotational case. So we can have uh, that two types of dynamics: the linear dynamics and the rotational dynamics. That's the two category of dynamics. So this case is that. So first we are interested in effective linear motion. So linear motion is nothing but motion about a line. So just these are the points. The displacement varies with time as we are moving from dynamics. And the equation of velocity is a basic simple equation. It's the derivative of displacement. Similarly, the acceleration equation is the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of displacement. Or you can just use the equation V dv by dx if the velocity is given as a function of x, say v of x. For example, v of x is equal to x square. We are given that the velocity varies as a function of displacement. So you can just use the equation uh, x square into uh, we say dv by dx or v dash of x. v dash of x will be 2x. You can just uh, take it over here and we will get 2x cube. As the equation of acceleration is just an example. You can just start using this example. And force, force is f is equal to m is nothing but the second law, Newton's second law, basic equation. So let's get move on. Next, the kind of kinematic equations of motion. These equations we have in the lower classes. The here I use the notation uh, v to the final velocity, u to the initial velocity, t for time. In a for acceleration, a for displacement, then we can write the equation the final velocity is nothing but the initial velocity plus acceleration times t. Similarly, in the equation, the equation for displacement in terms of initial velocity and acceleration, uh, and the final velocity, velocity and displacement relationship. So, all these equations are valid only in the case of when the acceleration is constant. So, let us take an example. Imagine uh, this is a building of high tech and we are dropping a ball from here. Then the ball will accelerate with a constant acceleration g. This is nothing but the acceleration constant, it is nothing but 9.8. So, this is an example where the acceleration is constant. So, we can just you can use all these equations according to our need. Uh, so, for example, let's Discuss uh, here from here I drop the ball. So we need to find what will be the velocity when it reaches the floor. 
say the building's height to be h. So we can just use this equation since we want the displacement. We know the displacement. The displacement is already known, and the initial velocity is zero. So we can just write v square is equal to 2g h. Since displacement is the distance travelled from uh, the top of the building to bottom, which is the height of the building, and the acceleration in this case is g, and the initial velocity is zero. So we can just write the equation v square is equal to 2g h. This is simple equation. So we can just uh, take the roots on both sides, and we will get v is equal to to 2 g h that is the velocity when it reaches the floor. Similarly, we can find the time using this equation or using this equation too. If you already know the uh, at uh, what velocity it reaches the earth. So can just use the equations accordingly. So let's move on. So let's discuss a problem. The position of a particle moving along a straight line is defined by the relation C is equal to t cube minus t square minus tan cube plus tan. So, by taking the particle on the velocity, we can see um, and as well at the tan t. And this is simple to the case. So, the heat and velocity is the concept of velocity and at present. So, we are discussing the concept of velocity. So, this is what the derivative of the displacement dx by dt with respect to time or the rate of change of the state. So we can just take the derivative, the derivative of this equation, that t cube minus t square is tan. We can just take the derivative of this expression <coughs> and equate the derivative of the expression to be zero. Uh, so that's why I have done here. We just take the derivative. We can just take t square minus t minus tan. So we just equate this to be zero and solve this quadratic equation. Now solve this quadratic equation, we get the t to be three. So next we are asked to find the acceleration at time t. So we can just again differentiate this equation here. t is nothing but 6 t by 6 and put t is equal to 2. And we will get the acceleration to be 6 meter per second square. Very basic equation is the direct derivative and substitution. So let's move on. This is the DLMR system. So this DLMR system is nothing but the alternative form of the Newton second of this. So what is Newton second of this? Newton second law of motion is nothing but the person by this motion. Force is nothing but the mass and acceleration. So we can just take this MA to the other side. Say in real parts of the force plus negative of mass and acceleration is equal to zero. That is F minus MA is equal to zero. This is what I am asking to form of the real parts of the force. So we can just uh, write the equation in the, in the other form. Say sigma. Fc equal to zero. Your Fc is nothing but uh, F minus m. So the this just the uh, the uh, uh, we have already seen it in the static case sigma uh, Fx zero sigma Fy zero. So it's the dynamic equation. And when you say that the body is in a in the equilibrium under the real force F and the fixed force F minus MA. And this is the equation F minus MA is equal to 0. This is the equation in the case of a dynamic equilibrium. And this F minus MA is called the inertial force or it's a fixed force. Okay, uh, the most commonly used word is the inertial force. Okay. This creates a reverse effect. Actually, so it's uh, uh, basically this equation f minus m uh, represents the dynamic equilibrium case. So let's discuss a very let's discuss the case of the lift. So imagine a man standing in the lift. Uh, his body is under rest, so he can just directly uh, his weight will be in the downward direction, say mg. It is directly at t is equal to mg from the from the equations of statics. So this we already already studied in the previous modules. So what we are interested in these two figures. So imagine um, the lift acts with tension t. Here is a rope, rope with tension t, and the lift is moving upward with an acceleration a. 
so this body this man will have the mass mg in the downward direction so we can just find the net force oh, so let me just come back here so this equation f minus ma is equal to 0 we need to remember the fact that f is the net external force on the body net external force so sorry it is the net external force so here the tension is in the upward direction and mg is in the downward direction so the net force will be t minus mg in the upward direction here the tension is higher that's because the body is moving in the upward direction so we can just put the equation f in the equation f minus m is equal to 0 f is equal to t minus mg so you can just write the equation t minus mg m is equal to 0 you can rearrange and uh, for equations for t and a so similarly in the here case the uh, lift is angulation in the downward direction so here there is mg since the lift is going in the downward direction the magnitude of mg is higher or otherwise the tension provided by the rope is not enough so that means the net force is mg minus t since the body is accelerating in the downward direction you can just write it like mg minus t minus ma is equal to 0 very simple equation for that case so when uh, let's take this acceleration to be g so if we uh, make this a is equal to g then the tension in the rope will be 0 in that case it's called free body of the body so I hope this is clear if not just pause the video and think about it it's a very simple like basic logic so it's more so a force of 300 newton uh, acts on a body of weight so I'm sorry it's the weight over here it's 500 newton actually mm, find the acceleration of the body using TLM bars principle so TLM bars principle equation is nothing but F minus M A is equal to 0. So we are given the force 300 Newton. We are asked to find the acceleration. So we must know the mass. So mass we can be only to the weight of the body. So the mass is nothing but weight divided by the G. So you can just uh, find the mass of the body with this equation. In the substitute in this equation and solve for A. And we will get the uh, express the velocity to be sorry the acceleration to be uh, 5.88 meter meter per second square so let's move on <coughs> a block of uh, 100 newton uh, and 500 newton are connected to a flux flexible but in its reversing as in front the assuming the coefficient of friction between the block 100 and uh, surface uh, to be 0.25 find the acceleration of the mass and tension in the stream. So we are asked to find the acceleration. Obviously, this block will be moving downwards. And so this block will be moving in this direction. And here there will be weight mg. And this surface will be providing a normal reaction in the upper direction. Similarly, there is the friction, so it's not in this direction. The tension in this direction. Similarly, a tension in this direction. And the weight of the body mg in the downward direction. So, we can just apply the logic of lift for the block B. So, we can just write mg minus T minus ma equal to c so how do i write this equation so the mg 
is downward, the T is in the upward direction. So the uh, acceleration is in the downward direction. So we can just uh, take mg minus t to be the net force and minus m a from the D'Alembert's uh, principle. So we can just make the frame the equation. So that's what I have done here in the first case. So let's remember the fact that here it is the mass. I have taken the capital letter MA to be the weight of the body. So similarly, uh, so this is the case for the block B actually. This is for the case of block B and this is for the case of block A. So in case of block A, it's accelerating in this direction and the tension is in the direction of acceleration. So obviously tension will have the magnitude. And the force will be opposing so you can just write t minus m, m u m a minus m g m g m a is equal to zero you can just frame these two equations uh, it's the case of we can just supply the case of uh, the lift so this we can solve for t and a and we'll get the value of a and t uh, hello so let's move on to the problem four. So in this we are uh, seeing like a block of mass m1 which is on the external side. So another block mass m2 is connected or this way. So weight of this block is 1,000 newton and 600 newton and the uh, coefficient of friction is uh, 40 newton and the angle of inclination is 45 degrees. So let's go to the board and so here it will be m1 in the downward direction. So the reaction in tension T. So we start tension in faster here T. So this tension also will be here T. So the resultant of these two tensions, T and T, two T will be here. So here there is also friction. So the friction will be in this direction. So I will say I will take the friction in this direction. So let's assume that this mass M2 is moving downwards in the acceleration A. So then this mass will be moving upwards in the acceleration to A. So what will it do it? So that's because of this piece. Tension is by A proportional to 1 by A. So that will be uh, here 2 a Here the tension is 2t. We will take 2t because uh, it is the resultant of these two tensions, t and t. And I think that this block is moving downward if you have to let it a. Then here the tension is t. Then this block will be moving then at the to a. Since tension is universal to the person T, or tension is directly to the person T, and tension. So, why do we take the direction of friction to do this? Since the block is moving in the upward direction, or since the block is moving in this direction, the friction will be trying to oppose it. So, that's why I draw friction in this direction. So, let me just move on to the solution. Uh, so we are just going to apply the real number of school as here. So that's what I have shown here. So here there is the W. So here there is W cos theta. So we are replacing the friction effect in the downward direction. And then the block is moving downward with an acceleration A. Then I'm going to an acceleration to A. And so here the tension is. That is something I uh, forgot to add in the favor diagram. So, here we can just write that equation as in case of. So, so here the block of the mass is just like m2, so we can just write that m2 minus 2t. So, this is just the case of lift. We have already discussed uh, the previous problem. To be, this is nothing but the mass. So, uh, conventionally, I take the capital letter to be the weight and the smaller to be the 
más o que hoy. So, yeah, uh, we can just frame this equation. Here it is A. So, but this equation, uh, it's a little bit tricky. So, let me just clear this and explain. So, so, here there is W in this direction. We can just type two components W cos theta in the direction of the normal reaction and W sin theta opposite. So, in the direction of the plane. And here there will be friction in this direction. In some of this one, in this direction, or in the upward plane of pressure A. So, let me just redraw that block. So, here we have that tension. Here we have W minus sine theta. Here we have friction. And the block is in the upward plane of pressure to A. So you can just write T minus since the mass is moving in upward direction, the tension is obviously higher. So you can just write tension minus the W sine theta minus the friction. So that's what I wrote that this term our net to four. T has been the tension minus. So all the body that happens is the weight of the body. Sine theta times minus we use the coefficient of friction times uh, m1 cos theta m1 cos for 45 so you already know the friction is nothing but mu times the normal reaction so here the normal reaction is equal to the w cos theta that's here or here the m1 cos 45 and then m1 by d is nothing but mass of the body and then the term to a the center block is in the upward direction of 2a. So I already told where uh, it is 2a. So let me just clear this. So we can just take m1 to be so it's already given. So it's already given the value of m1 and m2. Then just substitute this equation and the value of mu. Then we'll get an two equations in the term of t and a. You can just solve for that and we'll get that. Expression value and time to value. So, the really last important is this logic. Can you, if you are able to form these three equations, then it's pretty easy to solve the problem. So, let's get to moving on. So, using the specific impulse momentum is working with it here. So, impulse momentum, you can see the concept of a section. You know, no problem with your expression. So, you can just understand the concept. The property is nothing but impulse force is equal to the momentum. So it's very very basic This is inversely for the same equation. And if I frame the equation, F in the delta minus T is equal to delta. So it's that equation. So we don't need to bother uh, how this key or this derivation of the we're not interested in that. It's a concept of this. So when I speak now what can I be here? So can we have this equation? So what is work done by all forces is setting what is equal to the Change in kinetic energy. So, in the work that is equal to change in kinetic energy. So, the work that is equal to change in kinetic energy. So, this is a concept only system. Okay. So, we just need to understand this equation. So, let's move on. Next is, sorry, projection motion. Sorry, projectile motion. So it's projectile motion. So this is projectile motion. So I am pressing a body with a velocity. So if you saw the arrow in here, you so project with a velocity. So we can this is called the horizontal height of the uh, projectile, and this is called the maximum height of the projectile. And time taken by the projectile to move from here to here is called as time of flight. So these are the equations. So they are already in the lower classes. The maximum is equal to what you call as for theta a to b. For theta is the projection and u is the initial uh, velocity of velocity of projection. Similarly, the uh, lower thing you square times square two theta divided by square. Uh, sorry, you square times two theta by b. 
and time of flight to new society travel. So, for not that, uh, if you are considering an ideal project, the time taken for the project to reach from the uh, bottom to this region, the maximum height, and the maximum height to the bottom, say T1 to reach the maximum height and T2 to so the maximum height to the ground, and T1 will be equal to T2. And if he is equal to t by 2, the time of half and the time of life. So, these are all the factors you want. So, let's discuss a problem, a simple problem. A body is going to such an angle that it was not less than 3 times the maximum height. So, we are up to the angle of position. So, you can just write this question rx equal to 4 x max. So, we are already given the equation for x max and r. So we have already wrote the equation for H max and R over here. You can just substitute in the equation and solve it. And we get 4 theta. So we get theta is equal to tan minus 4 by 3. Or you can just use this equation R tan theta is equal to 4 H max and substitute for R is equal to 3 H max. H max H max comes on both sides cancelled. And tan you get tan theta is equal to 4 by 3 or theta is equal to tan minus 4 by 3. So let's discuss another problem. A block of mass 5 kg is projected with a velocity 10 g meter per second at an angle 60 degrees to the horizontal. The highest point of the projectile explodes and breaks into two fragments of mass uh, uh, 4 kg and 1 kg. And uh, the fragments operate horizontally after the explosion. Uh, the explosion is being named as said that the kinetic energy of the system at the highest point of it. So, calculate the separation between the two fragments when they reach the ground. Obviously, a big question. So, I want you to pause this video and think about this. Just yes, draw a single diagram. So, take off the diagram. So, let me just draw it. So, this is the projection. So, I think uh, this is the highest area. Uh, so this this line, so this is the so in this so this is the assumed part of the projectile So it goes into two masses. So say one mass follows this path. And another mass follows this part. So we are asked to find this separation D. Or you can just clear it. As a diagram, you can just keep the part of the project. We can just assume that this project, these two masses go like this. And we are asked to find this. Distance. Actually, when the uh, particle explodes, so one particle is moving, should move in this direction, and another particle should move in this direction. Actually, it will be look like this, these two. But you can just assume it goes like this and this. Obviously, both are correct, and just it just means my diagram mathematics of the So, to call this model, First, we are finding the kinetic energy at the topmost position. So, why we are finding the kinetic energy at the body? As the body explodes, the uh, energy conservation is obeyed. So, uh, we can just find the kinetic energy. And obviously, that is how such a solve the problem. So, we find the kinetic energy. So, how about the phase? This is the phase. So in this position, uh, there won't be any uh, velocity in the upward direction or in the vertical direction. There will be only velocity in the horizontal direction, say cos p cos theta. So you can just write the equation half mg square, where v is nothing but p cos theta. So you can just substitute all the values from the unit the value of p theta, etc. So this is the time we need to be to take those. And I think it was really that the 
कार्डियोस्कोपिक जो सिस्टम एट द हाईएस्ट पॉइंट डबल फिट कर ले तो फिर जब मैं आ गया तो द कैटेगरी में द आईएस मैथ पोजीशन विल डबल सो द टू टैंक्स टू सो लेट नो सम नो प्रॉब्लम्स एक ग्लास मोरिंग ड्रॉप द on the smooth flow uh, from it which bounces to a height of 9 meters and second bounces a try to a height of 6 meters uh, or from what height the ball has stopped and uh, what is the coefficient of precision between the glass and the floor so we need to find uh, two things uh, at what height uh, the ball was dropped and what is the coefficient of resolution uh, so let's start a sand uh, what is coefficient of precision so coefficient of precision is a ratio of uh, final to initial uh, relative velocity between object after they collide uh, so imagine I have a ball named a and another ball named b so these two balls are going with a velocity say u a um, and this with the initial velocity U B. Imagine uh, the two collide. Uh, this is be the case before collision. So this is the case before collision. So after collision, uh, the ball A and B goes with the velocity V is U and V A. And B goes with a velocity V B. This is after collision. Uh, so in this case, again, write uh, the equation of uh, coefficient of precision E to be nothing but uh, V A minus U A over V B minus U B. This is the relative velocity uh, uh, of the two objects. Uh, the uh, ratio between final to initial relative speed between two objects after they collect. Uh, so this is the uh, final velocity. This is the initial velocity. This is the, the relative. Speed, uh, so that's ratio 3a divided by bb. So let's uh, discuss one special case. So imagine, uh, imagine what this case. So let the height of height be h. So from here we are dropping a ball. It uh, touches the floor, bounces back, and its height goes on decreasing like this. So here the collision is between the floor and the ball. The floor uh, has no velocity. So let's take the floor to be object A and uh, the uh, ball to be B. Hence we can simplify the equation of coefficient of resolution E to be uh, the final velocity sorry sorry the final velocity to the initial velocity uh, so that's what we have done here the coefficient of resolution is the ratio of uh, final velocity to the initial velocity since the floor is stationary so uh, here the height is h so imagine we drop the ball at a velocity v dot um, then using the primary equation v square minus u square equal to 2a s or 2a h here the initial uh, velocity is 0 so we can solve for this and we get v to be root 
two uh, GH since axial rest is G. So that's why I wrote since uh, V is uh, directly proportional to root G. So we can uh, write this equation E to be square root of the height H1 to H0. So we need to understand. Uh, let this height be H0 and this height the uh, pass after the height bounce back after the first close collision to be H1 and this to be H2. So this this ratio like the root uh, H1 over H0 root H2 over H1 remains as a constant and that that constant is the coefficient of resolution. So here we have given two heights, the height uh, 9 um, after the first first bounce uh, and the height 6 meter after the second bounce. So we can just take the, its ratio 6 over 9, uh, minus this but h2 over h1 and we will get the coefficient of restitution directly. So the next we need to know from what height the ball was dropped. So we already know that uh, coefficient of restitution is equal to v1 over v0 imagine the velocity uh, to be v0 and v1 uh, v0 is just at this uh, when the uh, last ball comes in contact with the uh, surface uh, and after it bounces upward with the velocity v1 um, so we already know it is uh, inversely proportional or directly proportional to root h uh, we already know the value of uh, e, which is nothing but 0.81. Uh, then we can just substitute it to be root over h1 divided by h0 to 0.8, sorry, 0.81. We just square both sides and solve for uh, H0 and we will get the value 13.7. So let me just explain it again by clearing this. So this was the height from which it dropped. So the, uh, this is the surface. So the ball comes contact the surface, bounces back and it, this, this goes over. So we are asked to find what is the coefficient of this. Coefficient is nothing but the velocity at the time when the ball uh, comes in contact with the uh, surface or the floor and after it bounces back. This uh, instant is this, this, this change, this change in direction of the ball at the instant that two velocities ratio is called the coefficient of precision. Um, and we already know that clear this. We already know that the velocity uh, is uh, directly proportional to root h, so we can just substitute and we already know that uh, this ratio will be a constant uh, throughout the motion. So we can just use these two quantities, the 9 meters and 6 meters and find the coefficient of resolution. So using this coefficient of resolution, we can just find out from what, what height it was been dropped. Simply h0 is equal to uh, h1 divided by e square of this is nothing but the equation e is equal to root over h1 divided by h0. So then let's move on to another problem. We just clear these things. Two cars A and B traveling in the same direction get stopped at a traffic signal. When the signal turns green, A accelerates such a velocity. 0.75 and B and 1.7 seconds later, uh, car B accelerates and accelerates 1.1 meter per second. And this way, when and where uh, we will overtake A and speed of E is at the time. So, here there is a hint we need to apply the uh, concept of uh, relative velocity. So, let's understand what is uh, relative. Velocity first. first. 
Imagine the floor. So imagine uh, a block B and another block B. This moves with a velocity say V A and this moves with a velocity V B. So the relative velocity is something but uh, we need to find the relative velocity of A with respect to B. So we need to find the relative velocity of A with respect to B. This is nothing but the velocity of B minus the velocity of A. So what does this actually mean is that uh, at what velocity B will be moving when the observer is in A. So imagine this take this to be two cars, uh, car A and car B. And um, when a person at car A looks the car B, so what will be the velocity of car B? That's called the relative velocity of B, relative velocity of A with respect to B. So you can just use this concept to solve this problem. So let's get started. So to um, apply the concept of relative velocity, so first we need to uh, the, uh, apply that uh, since the car A starts earlier, so we need to synchronize the time. So uh, over here, first we need to find the distance traveled uh, by A in 1.75 seconds. You can just use the equation. Uh, half a t square since uh, it starts at uh, the term u t uh, u plus t u t will be 0 uh, that's anything but 0.5 into you can just apply this equation and we will get the value we will get the value 1.148 uh, uh, similarly the velocity to be 1.315 so now we can just find the relative velocity of B with respect to A. It's nothing but uh, 1.3125 uh, minus 0 since the B starts at a time of uh, 1.75 seconds. So next we need to find the relative acceleration of B with respect to A. Uh, this is what the relay, uh, difference between the acceleration of A uh, minus distance, the acceleration of B. Think about minus uh, 0.35 and the relative distance. So at the instant of 1.75 seconds, the B will be starting its motion and A will be here. So, this is the relative distance, say D. That's 1.148, uh, or it is a distance traveled by A uh, in 1.75 seconds. So, actually, we need to find, we are finding this over here over the first time. So, we can just use the kinematic equation as is equal to. So U T uh, plus half A T square. Here uh, we can just uh, became everything relative S relative, U relative, A relative. Uh, so the time uh, will never be relative. Uh, we can just apply this equation and solve this for that equation will get the value of time to be uh, 1.01 uh, seconds. So they just uh, survey so with uh, the time 1.75 seconds uh, and find uh, at what distance uh, the body will the or the B will not take A will be uh, 2.8566 seconds. Similarly, we can just uh, find the velocity of uh, B at the time of overtake and velocity of A at the time of overtake just uh, using the value of this time. It is about 1.1 into 2.76. Uh, Sorry, here I have made a mistake. It's not 2.76 seconds. It is 1 point, sorry. It is 1.1 into 1.01 actually. 
uh, here to uh, 2.76 second that's a mistake I made uh, since uh, the B travels after 1.7 seconds to B so this time we found 1.17 seconds will be the uh, time taken for B to reach uh, A so we need to find the velocity at uh, the time of our take that we need to take 1.10 1 seconds to the case of B but in case of A we need to take the whole time thank you